Felix here. Happy Tuesday to you. Banking crisis guarantee Tuesday. When governments say to you, you know what, we'll just guarantee everything. That's when I stop sleeping well. <laughs> because when governments tell you that they might need to get that bazooka out, typically it means there's a lot more lurking there than you and I have seen. So what's going on here? Well, the regional banks are begging the government to lift the $250,000 cap on deposit guarantees because they're saying all oh, the money is going to the big banks. JP Morgan is robbing us of our lunch. And the government's apparently considering an unlimited deposit guarantee. And we're going to have to think that through. We also have to look at why UBS, who's just bailed out Credit Suisse while under duress, um, they basically had their little finger in one of those little screwy things they used to torture people with. And um, the side effect was that that they let bondholders suffer 100% losses, right? Complete wipeout. And those kind of bonds are special bonds. They're called AT1 bonds. They're convertible bonds. And they are therefore like the pest. Nobody wants them. Nobody wants to touch them. And guess who's got lots of those? UBS. So the very bank they used to bail out the bank that was rubbish is now infected with the disease that the Swiss central bank let loose in Europe. It's just baffled me really how these people don't think things through. But if you want to have something that actually is thought through, uh, come and join me tomorrow. Literally, I just added another 100 spots because we were, we were full for the masterclass tomorrow at felixfranzenorg slash wealth. And I'll share with you exactly how I trade, how I invest, what I do, what I learned as a banker and how Wall Street makes money. Like, you know, Citadel made $16 billion last year. It's a hedge fund. Um, while you probably lost somewhere between 20 to 70% of your money, unless you were in cash, in which case you lost about 10% of it. Um, there is a way that these guys trade and that these guys invest that you and I can do it as well with the same low risk profile. Um, but you have to really understand. So come and join me. Felix Renzo Rocks of Wealth. It will be free. Of course, none of the following, all the above is financial advice, just an old banker sharing with you his thoughts. Let me just share this screen here with you. This is a Bloomberg email this morning. And can we make that bigger? We can make that bigger. AT1 bonds, which are now the, um, really, it's the, the HIV of the bond world in, in 1982. Um, UBS, 28% of their bonds are these AT1s that nobody wants. And I literally, I went to a very fancy gala thing yesterday, black tie and all. And what were people talking about? Um, they just sold their AT1s, these convertible bonds, because they were losing money on them. So it's a very strange choice, isn't it? It just shows the ineptitude, the incompetence, the idiocy of regulators. And those very same regulators are now telling us, we're going to guarantee you all bank deposits if this crisis expands. Well, one way of freaking people out, I would say, is to tell people that. Imagine this. Just think this through for a moment. If you guarantee all deposits, what are you saying to banks? And what are you saying to you and me as depositors? Well, you're basically saying to banks, do whatever you want so you could potentially get the highest returns possible. We take all risk away from you. So you are just going to encourage the gamblers who are running banks to really, really go nuts and go, go all out because there is a chance that they could double their bonus. And if there's a bank collapses, it's like, well, it doesn't really matter, does it? So absolutely moronic. And also, we have a responsibility to, to select a decent bank. We have a responsibility, especially if you're a larger depositor, like a, like a company that has billions of dollars, to check out and, and, and have a risk management. You're basically saying, nope, government will run it. It's essentially nationalizing banks. I think that's the equivalent. It literally is, if that goes through the US saying, we will nationalize the banking sector. All risk, we will bear it, which is just bizarre. Absolutely bizarre. Um, Today, Jay Powell. Jay Powell speaks um, tomorrow. Um, shall we get another sherry? Indeed. <laughs> Large one. <laughs> um, 
And yes, the market is quite liking it, which of course is the um, the obvious because if you are told, you know, I trade. If you told me, Felix, all your losses will be guaranteed, um, would I change my trading strategy? Yes, massively. I would be the biggest degenerate gambler out there because if I didn't have a have a downside, I, I would I would go nuts. Now this is the market this morning, pre market. Everything is up pretty much. Apple is down, and Lily. Not sure why. Um, Pepsi down a little, but that's pretty much the only thing I can spot. Everything is basically up. And of course, we promised the wonderland, the bailout of all bailouts, the bailout that will make the COVID bailout jealous, that will make the 2008 global financial crisis bailout uh, look like a teeny tiny little sibling. And um, the market, of course, loves it. But you have to think this stuff through. This is like the short termism that we've been stuck with, where the government basically spends your money. Well, it's not my money. It's your money. I'm not American. I'm not paid tax in the US. Um, and uh, it's just saying, well, we'll bail us out as long as you vote for us again tomorrow. And what happens in three years' time, we don't really care. We'll probably be dead, but at least with the age of your pre current president. Um, would you short PIMCO? Jennifer, like I, I would never short anything. I, I just think shorting anything is a particularly dangerous beast because it can go up and when you think it can go, go down. Now, you could set up a trade that would cost you 50 bucks, Jennifer, um, and, and that would make you maybe 500 if PIMCO were to go down. I wouldn't, again, recommend that, but at least you could have a, have a limited downside, right? And I think that's something that people should understand. If you want to gamble and speculate on something going in a particular direction, you can do that, uh, but you have to pay for it, and you have to realize that that's a loss you are very, very likely to to in, in, in incur, right? So um, let me have a look at Pimco, for example. I, I'll show you what an example looks like. Now there is actually bugger all volume on Pimco, so there's really no options volume on um, on Pimco, is there? No, I can't find any. So I I, I couldn't really think, figure out a way you could set that up. Um, but you can, but you know, we, I, I, I do it sometimes. Um, do I lose most of the time? Yes. On those trades, you lose most of the time. It's just the way that they're structured. So, you know, it's just the way, the way it works. But why, why would anybody do it um, in, in, their, in their right mind? Well, some people like to gamble, but at least if you know what, 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 the, um, what the, the risk is here, then, um, you know, it's a it's a reasonable thing to do. Let me show you an example here, Jennifer. Okay, so let me share my screen with you. And this is definitely not financial advice. This is a crazy trade. If you thought strongly that Microsoft was going to go down, you could set up a trade like this, in theory, uh, where you would spend $71. That's the worst that could ever happen to you. You could only lose $71. And that's important to understand. And if you're right, and Microsoft does head for the $250 range, um, by April 21st, you could make 678. So you could make like a 9x return in theory. So very, very low probability of that happening, 17 percentage points. But if you had some smart insight, maybe you'd be right. Maybe you'd be right. But at least you know you're only going to do $71, by the way. Don't do this. This is a random, random thought, just to illustrate the point. Um, so that's, I think, a way to sort of short a stock. But if you just sold Microsoft, um, then very, very likely you lose a lot more than $71. And, and your upside might not even be as great as this. So I think you got to be smart about it. you got to understand how these things work. You want to understand how that kind of, sort of things works? <laughs> Felixfriends.org slash wealth. Sign up for the masterclass tomorrow. Um, Malik says, hit the like button and let's ride the market wave. Indeed, absolutely. Jerome, you got to sign 500 credit Swiss shares and over the weekend it was down 60% uh, and you say it with a crying smiley. I'm glad you say it with a crying smiley because Jerome, I, I know you knew, you knew the risk that you were, you were taking on that. Yeah, Credit Swiss obviously uh, is a, it's gambling and you can get assigned and it can really, really sting. Um, Fed live streaming tomorrow. I don't think I will because I'm doing a masterclass at the same time live. Um, I'll probably give you a summary of it. Or join me on the masterclass. I'll tell you what they say during. Uh, but uh, again, links here, felixfenster.org slash wealth. Um, I'm hoping... Um... Oh, you got assigned minus 500 shares. Okay, then in that case, you made some money. Okay, but you were lucky, Jerome. You were lucky. I don't think you were a, 
you're a craftsman there. I think you were probably lucky, but you deserve it. Is you're you're a super nice guy. So you made 600 bucks. That's very very nice. Um, why are tech stocks going up? The government is promising us the bailout of all bailouts. Basically, there is no longer any risk. Uncle Sam's got you covered. You lose your phone on the way to work or you spill a drink on yourself. Just write to Uncle Sam. They'll buy you a new outfit. They'll get you a new phone. That's essentially what they're promising to do to the banking sector, which is just bizarre. Uh, but uh, Jerome, okay, I'm glad you realized you were lucky. Um, and it's nice to be lucky sometimes. And if you trade a lot, get lucky sometimes uh, but sometimes you also get unlucky uh, so um but most of the time it's greed that makes us unlucky andrea is the recession cancelled or is it deeper well normally you get liquidity pumps and bailouts just before you hit the cliff and really really go down not saying that's necessarily going to happen but that's what 2007 looked like um that's what yeah Typically, the government steps in when things that, you know, stuff's about to hit the fan. Uh, GS Strategies, welcome there as well. And Jan says, debt will explode indeed, which could be a reason for interest rates to go down. Maybe also why tech stocks are flying this morning. Have you gotten a new earring, says Thomas? Earring? Earring? <laughs> I don't think you'll find me with any piercings, Thomas. Um, maybe it was just an inflection or something, but no, no earrings either side uh, yet. Um, now, if Mullen goes to $1,000, perhaps we'll get an earring. <laughs> but don't buy Mullen, please. Um, uh, Parag says, I've read over 100 balance sheets. Bank balance sheets are convoluted. I stay away from them. And a lot of the stuff isn't on it, right? A lot of the risk isn't on it. All those credit derivative swaps are not on the balance sheet. So... Who the heck knows what they do, um, and therefore, precisely, I don't, uh, I don't, you know, get involved in that. Andreas says it's a hair reflection. Yeah, sorry to disappoint. No piercings here yet. Maybe I should get a piercing, a change of the nose. Maybe. What, what do you think? Uh, GS, indeed. But look at a stock chart from two thousand seven. We looked at one yesterday. That was, let me see if I can find it. Um, trading floor whispers, because we put it in the email yesterday. Let's see if I can find that. There we go. You know, we've got a premium newsletter, guys. If you haven't signed up for that, do tradingfloorwhispers.com. And uh, let me find the chart for you. Yeah, this is, this is sort of it, really. So this was 2008, early 2008. The market rallied 14% as JP Morgan bought Bear Stearns. Reminds me very much of the Credit Suisse saga. They didn't want to buy it either. But again, there's a central banker with a loaded Uzi uh, standing next to the JP Morgan CEO and said, well, if you don't do this, I'll go through your books and I'll audit you. And he said, please don't. Um, I'll buy this Duff Bank. Um, and they regretted it ever since. It was a terrible, terrible purchase for JP Morgan. And it did that. And then we went up 14% and we rallied and we're like, it's all over. It's amazing. Stock is to the moon. And then, well, the market tanked 53%. <laughs> so um, I'm not saying it's going to happen again. But, you know, you get these irrational little little um, bull traps, uh, as, as, as you called them here, which is, I think, a good description here. What would be your advice to someone just starting? Okay, first of all, US legal system makes it illegal for me to give you financial advice, Bo Hunter. Um, second of all, educate yourself. Because... You can't really rely on many people in this industry because most people are selling a financial product and they have an interest in pushing you towards that. So that's, I think, the, the, the challenge. And we don't get taught any of this stuff in school or business school or law school or anywhere. I mean, I studied economics, all that stuff. It doesn't really teach you how the market works. Um, so I would honestly find somebody you somewhat trust. And, and, and start learning what they do and how they do it. And if they're doing well, I'd emulate what they do in a paper trading account for some months. Um, have patience. Don't aim for money now. Aim for money later. 
and learn now. That's the way it works. Uh, everything else is just luck. And you can get lucky for a couple of months in a row because the market's going in a particular direction. Uh, but in the long run, it's about actually understanding what's going on. So uh, if you want to, you're very welcome to join me tomorrow on a pre-masterclass I'm running. It's like a 90-minute lecture lesson where I run you through how I do what I do, um, how I made 126% return on capital employed last year and how I'm comfortable making those kind of returns um, and how I manage my risk and downside. And, and all of that essentially comes from Wall Street banks. So sign up for that. Maybe that, that will be the, the short answer to your question. Um, what do you think about that's happening in France? Um, well, sun's shining, food's okay. French are a little prickly. <laughs> um, look, France has a um, affinity to um, wish to raise their retirement age and then people go out and riot. Uh, we could talk about lots of conspiracies around that, but essentially it happens all the time. It's been happening for 20 years. Uh, I, I think there are fundamental social problems in most European countries, which are bleeding obvious if you drive through it or if you are in Europe, like I went to Marseille last week, crikey, um, they've got some social issues there and um, no one's doing anything about it. So I think we can hypothesize and talk about it, but it doesn't really achieve very much. So I decided to not talk about those kind of things very much and focus on what I can actually do to make an impact on my life and an impact on other people. And I think that's honestly financial education. That's the that's what gives you freedom. And then you can say, well, I want to live here. I want to live there. I want to move to this island or to the Bahamas where, you know, Jerome is sailing about or wherever you want to go in the world. It gives you that freedom and that option. And then you don't really need to care that much what governments do because you can't really control it. Maybe a good time to set up on a, a, a collar on positions, Carl. Uh, certainly something to, to, to look at and think about. A collar is essentially a hedging strategy that like the JP Morgan collar that expires on the 31st. Can technical trading, um, general faster way of transactions, access to trading tools, change the picture of this crisis? Well, it could cause a lot more volatility. So you have so much money now chasing events automatically through algorithmic trading that say if, uh, and then you've got all the zero day options, who would be interested in a, in a free course on zero day options. Would anybody be interested in that? Maybe I should put a little poll out on that. I was thinking about that yesterday. Let me do that. Um, would you would you join a hang on free session on zero DTE options? Yes, no. What is zero DTE? I'd love to, love to hear what you guys think on that. Um, but it could make movements more. So say if the market would normally go down 5% on a really bad day, it could be 8% or 10% or something like that, 20 in theory, fairly unlikely, but in theory. So it could make it more volatile. I, I guess that's the, really that. Um, What's the thesis for the long bull run? Indeed, Simon, stocks are expensive. Um, inflation's high. <laughs> well, you could, okay, if you turn, want to turn it around, you say earnings weren't that bad. Uh, companies seem to be doing, doing pretty well with inflation, right? Margins are not like completely falling through the floor. And um, governments bailing us out right, left, and center. Could be a thesis if you want it to be. Uh, I'm not saying that's what it is. Um, French are always prickly, indeed. Um, teachers are in a position to change whole societies, Branko. I think that's true, but the trouble is that if you're a teacher in an institution, um, not saying that teachers, teachers are institutionalized, but you know what I mean, uh, they, um, they have a curriculum, right? So they can't really teach what they want to be teaching. They get told what they need to be teaching. So that's one of the beautiful things about essentially private education that you can teach whatever you want to teach. And that's, that's obviously what we do. So, you know, join me tomorrow. Uh, JD, you're very kind. Um, Stuart wants something on the zero DT. Would be glad to learn about that. Okay. Interesting. Um, why is the ES500 going up? Bailouts, I would say. I would literally say it's just bailouts. Nothing more than that. Everyone's happy that in the short term that the US is essentially saying, look, we might 
backstop and guarantee all bank deposits. Um, which is sort of like, well, what if Elon Musk has got $30 billion cash sitting in a bank? Does that mean that's guaranteed by the taxpayer? Is that fair? Should he not be in a position to manage that risk? Um, what about JP Morgan's $5 billion that they put into the first bank, Republic Bank, um, because the government told them to otherwise they'd go through their sock drawer and find all sorts of strange things. Um, is that now insured? Should it be? Should they not be in a position to make that decision on their own? Like, I, I just think it, it's, a, it's a staggering removal of risk from the private sector. And essentially, I honestly think if this happened in any country in the world, imagine if Russia did this, the headlines would be Russia nationalizes banks. I think that would be the headline. That's essentially what this proposal is here. Um, Credit Suisse, um, on the other hand, yeah, bailed out. Everyone's leaving the sinking ship. And the UBS, the Swiss bank that bailed them out, is um, suffering from the bond collapse of Credit Suisse because 28% of all UBS bonds are the very same type of 81 bonds that didn't get any money at all in the Credit Suisse deal. So very strange, to be honest with you, very strange. Um, I would not touch whatever debt the government is selling me, says Simon. Um, well, yeah, I mean, the government guaranteeing not all debt, but all deposits, which is essentially, you know, at the moment, banks have to keep about 10% of all the deposits um, of, of everything they're doing as, as, as essentially deposit capital, right? So they, you give them $1,000, they take $900 of that and they buy, um, you know, some sort of Ponzi Bitcoin with it. I'm kidding, but, you know, they're invested in something. They lend it out. That's essentially what they do for mortgages and cars and companies and so on. And, and the $100 of your money that you actually gave them, they keep. Um, and that's sort of the theory that that's all they need unless there's a bank run. But if there's a bank run, the $900 are invested and you're like, I want my $1,000. And they're like, yeah, we only have 100. But what did you do with the other 900? Yeah, we lent it to some bloke down the road and he went out of business. Um, that's the problem, right? So the government is essentially saying we'll guarantee the whole $1,000, no limit potentially. That's kind of crazy. And Simon, yes, um, well, in theory, and probably in debt, right, Simon? I don't think they're actually going to have to write a check. Um, but yes, bailouts are expensive and they do go on the national debt. Uh, and Stuart, you're quite right. The UBS cost to insure credit default swaps have spiked crazily, uh, very much like Credit Suisse. Now, UBS is a monster. It's, I think, a reasonably healthy bank. So uh, uh, you certainly wouldn't want a bank run on that. But it kind of just means you shouldn't take rubbish and park it into something that's decent because then you make the something that's decent less than decent. That's why we have bankruptcies. Bad companies should fail. Bad banks should fail. You have to let them fail. Now, you might want to protect the little old grandma who's got their cash in it, but you should not be protecting everybody. If you remove all risk, bad things happen because people take incredible uh, amount of risk down the road. Um, uh, and Branko, you're right. They're trying to guarantee the whole system. Uh, but it's just like... Fear, fear, um, they're scared, right? Because we haven't had, we haven't had a proper recession since like 2000. And even then we got bailed out fairly quickly. Uh, ever since the government's just like, oh, there's a problem. Let's give everybody some money. Let's chuck some money in that direction. Let's bail out the banks. Let's bail out these idiots and that industry and everything else. And oh, oil prices are up. Oh, let's give everybody cheaper oil. Like, what's this nanny state? What's this desire to never have anything bad happen for a short period of time? Good things happen because bad stuff happened before. That's normally the way it works. But yeah. It's a, it's a really baffling world that we are in, I must say. I, I, it's a strange one. So I try not to think about it all that much. And I just think, well, just focus on yourself and, 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 and run your businesses, run your life, enjoy yourself, educate yourself, become smarter, look for the opportunities and, and look for better ways of investing and managing your money. Because certainly you can't trust this bunch of goons to do it for you, right? I mean, Yellen basically saying US is going to intervene. They're going to protect all small banks. 
Now you might think that helps the small banks, but if I had my money in a small bank, uh, it'd be out of there like, you know, yesterday, because it's essentially saying small banks are at risk, isn't it? What's in the glass? Asked Dimitris. <laughs> um, it's um, it's herbs, a sort of herbal, some sort of herbal concoction, and and water. But it looks uh, it looks a bit like a, a sherry or something, right? It's a little too early for me for that. It's only uh, two p.m. here. Um, diversifying trash is not learned for two thousand eight. Paragon, you're quite right. Yeah, that was. Um, that was the rating agencies and no one's talking about the rating agencies, right? The rating agencies gave um, the uh, Silicon Valley Bank stellar ratings till 10 days ago. Um, seriously, you did not see that elephant of a risk in there? So bizarre. The Fed won't backstop your puts. True, probably not. I think I don't think they'll go as far as options trades. Um, Jägermeister, <laughs> yes, a pure glass of Jägermeister, if you know what that is. It's a fairly um, horrendous uh, German concoction. Um, Stuart, uh, you're very kind to say that. If you have any questions, guys, chuck them in there. Uh, Nati, uh, good morning to you, one of our coaching students. Um, a quick recap. Okay, quick recap is as follows. The US is floating the idea of a complete backstop a complete guarantee to all bank deposits. Trying to figure out how to do that legally with emergency powers, which is always a great way of going about stuff. Um, essentially, it would remove all risk from depositors for no limit whatsoever. You could have $500 million in your checking account and you would get bailed out. Um, their thinking is that that would put an end to bank runs. I don't think it will. And I think, don't think it also changes the flight of money from small banks to big banks because the Small Banking Association of America, or whatever they're called, you know, the, the little league of banks, uh, basically saying, please raise the limit from a quarter of a million uh, higher because anybody with any money is leaving our banks and they're all going up the road to JP Morgan. Um, and um, that's also going to continue, isn't it? So the small banks are basically done for in the US. And the big banks are going to celebrate it. And the big banks are definitely too big to fail. If, you know, if you're going to bail out something as irrelevant as the Silicon Valley Bank, then, you know, which essentially would have hit, yes, tech startups, definitely. But given that they're all, all the money was venture capital funds, you would have thought there would have been a private solution to bail out the good tech startups. I think there would have been private funding. Uh, there were other banks who were saying, look, we are going to make lending available to you and all that stuff. And then the government jumps in and goes, no, 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 don't worry about any of it. We've got you all covered. We take all venture capital risk on the government's balance sheet as in taxpayers pay for it. So if they're going to bail out that niche sector of highly educated, wealthy people with venture capital funding in Silicon Valley, then they're going to have to bail out absolutely everybody and their dog, right? And Obviously, the dogs should definitely get bailed out. Um, free cucumbers for everybody. But it just creates a huge problem down the road because it means risk management is no longer. If, say, you had a lot of money, and you had a family office, and you employed someone to manage the risk of your assets, well, you would just fire him, wouldn't you? You'd be like, there's no, no longer need for you. Um, Yellen's got that. She's just it replaced you with bailouts. Um, and, you know, what I was saying earlier, Take a take Bezos. Maybe he's got $5 billion in his checking account. Should he get bailed out for that if the bank he put it in failed? Should he? Well, he will under this plan. Same for big companies, right? Circle, that crypto idiotic exchange, they had $3 billion in cash in the Silicon Valley Bank. Not their cash, their client's cash. But shouldn't there be somebody at that organization that should be risk manager? And that should have spread that across, say, short-term treasuries, you know, one month, one week expiration, and therefore that money would have been safe. So you're removing all these incentives for companies to, and, and people to do anything about it. And you're just saying to bankers, go and gamble, guys, because we've got your back. It's like walking into a casino and the house whispering in your ear, by the way, all losses are covered. 
right? What are you going to do? You're just going to go nuts, aren't you? So that's what's that's that's totally bizarre. Um, that's kind of the, the key the key part here, really, is is is, is that part. Now in Europe, there is a um, the bailout of Credit Suisse. Now I know it's being being uh, pitched as a as a, a takeover, but it isn't really a takeover. It was a forced takeover for, by UBS, and UBS bought Credit Suisse. Now two types of people lost money on that deal. Shareholders lost sixty percent of their money except for Jerome, who made money. And secondly, bondholders lost 100% of their money. So if you bought, if you owned a Credit Suisse AT1 bond, which is a convertible bond, so it goes from debt to equity later, they lost all their money. Now, ironically, the one bank in Europe that has the largest amount of AT1 bonds issued is... UBS, the very bank that bought Credit Suisse, twenty-eight percent of their, um, their 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 debt is are these eighty ones, which now nobody wants to have anymore. So it's just baffling how short-term thinking these bailouts are. Really, I, I really don't get it. It's just bizarre. Why does nobody go to jail for breaking banks? Um, I know it's baffling. It's baffling. I mean, yeah, it's just peculiar. Like the rating agencies, they should be. I mean, if not, if not in jail, certainly should should have been, you know, brought to heel. Uh, and they haven't. Nobody really has that. So uh, it's just baffling. JD says, your losses are covered. Is it um, modern monetary theory in, in motion? Yeah, which is this theory that we can basically just fix everything with more and more debt and there's no consequence to the debt unless you get inflation with all the debt which clearly we do but you know a pleasure nutty legal theft aka banks um oliver you're very kind the 81 bonds are much higher risk now Yes, Lawrence, I think that's really the, the point. So you're thinking if a European bank or any bank goes under, previously, the bondholders pretty much got bailed out. There were, at the end of the 2008 saga, because I remember that I used to buy a lot of uh, subordinated bank bonds, and you would pay like 20 cents, 30 cents on the dollar for them. And then you could sell them a year later for like, 80 cents. So it was a tremendous trade. Um, but the last one, and that happened for like quite a few years. And then at the very end of the banking crisis, the government kind of caught on to that and said, whoa, whoa, hang on, why are all these traders making all this money from our bailouts? And there were a couple of banks, there were a couple of like, uh, small Austrian banks and so on, where they didn't give you back all the money on those subordinated bonds. So the guys who were really late to that trade lost some money. Um, but 100% wipeout, we never saw that. And certainly not at the very beginning here, where you just thought, well, everyone's in the frame of mind, everybody's going to get bailed out, right? If you bail out all depositors, why are you not bailing out bondholders? Why are you not bailing out shareholders? So, yes, I do think at the moment, people are freaked out because they don't know what's going to get bailed out. So these bonds values have, have, have tremendously dropped. Uh, Peter, you're very kind. Oliver says a thousand percent debt to GDP. Uh, things could be okay. Well, Japan is the is the the example, isn't it? Japan's got massive, massive indebtedness. I don't know what it is. Let me have a look at what it is. Um, and if you go to Japan. It's a beautiful country. It's lovely. The people are amazing. The food's the greatest in the world. Um, let me have a look. Japan debt. Government debt to GDP is 262%, I think. That's not that much by, uh, you know, it's like Italy, isn't it, <laughs> Andrea? <laughs> I like teasing you Italians. Um, um, but yeah, and it's just been going up, right, since 1981. 1981, it was 50%, now it's 262%. Uh, and you could, it's sustainable. Well, as long as the central bank basically buys all the government's debt, like the US model, you just get 
more and more money printing and no real consequence. And Japan has managed to do so without causing any inflation. And I think that's kind of where this modern monetary theory comes from, is that you can do this with causing out causing inflation. But the US tried it and the US got whopping, whopping inflation. Um, let me let me look that up. USA debt. Uh, let me try and find it. Economy, federal debt, total public debt. Okay, let me show you this chart. So that's total US debt. Uh, so this is the COVID experiment. You went from 100% to 134%. Now it's coming down. Why? Inflation. Inflation is actually bringing down debt. Now, if we add one more thing to it, which is uh, CPI. Uh, let's see if that works. Yes, here we go. Um, do you think... <laughs> Um, a lot more debt causes inflation, possibly, but really what it's all about is, 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 um, is, is money printing, right? So if you create debt and you basically sell that debt as a government to your central bank, the central bank essentially prints money, and that's what causes the runaway inflation that we have here. So, you know, I, I don't believe the modern, modern, modern monetary nonsense for a moment, but the market's loving it. The market's like bailouts all around. Brilliant. Uh, Saviet, what's more important, options volume or open interest? Uh, I would say open interest is more important. And um, Simon, yes, Japan is getting cheap. Like I remember going to Japan and everything cost me $3,000. Uh, you know, you got yourself a little bowl of noodles and, and then you, you know, applied for a loan at the end of it. And now you go there and you're like, I'm sorry. That's only three dollars fifty. You serious? Uh, what happened? So Japan's got cheap. Absolutely, wages haven't gone up in like twenty years. So it probably is a lot less fun to live there if you're Japanese. Um, but to visit, highly encourage it. Andrea, I moved to Japan. I moved to Italy. You have twenty minutes to decide where you go. Twenty minutes. He's, that's a Jap that's a, that's an Italian. He's like twenty minutes. You know, you can get yourself a little espresso. You can get some pasta. You can enjoy yourself. Think about it. Um, the American Andrea would say, "You've got ten, ten seconds." Um, where would I rather go? I think to live as a Western person, Italy is going to be a lot easier in the long run uh, because uh, culture and, and so on is a lot more similar. Japan, probably to live in in the long run, is fairly tricky for most Westerners, certainly in terms of language and culture and so on. It's a much, much stronger culture than um, than Italy. So I, I would I would have to say Italy. Um, can we do the zero day options thing? Um, how many of you said yes to that? About 100 people said they'd want to join that. Okay. That's probably uh, probably good enough. So it's something to go in in, in the diary. I appreciate that. Um, James, thinking about moving to Italy. Yeah, it's a lovely place. Absolutely. Plus, great tax deal, actually, at least for 10 years. Do you think the Fed will pause? I don't. No, I think the Fed will keep going. I think the Fed wants to look like business as usual. Nothing happening here. Uh, there are no banks on fire in the background. Uh, so, you know, I think they'll keep going. Alberto, how do you connect your macro with specific positions and options? Well, a lot of the time I just rely on, on, on probability. I rely on macro is important because, you know, Alberto, our trades are typically less than three weeks long. So it's kind of like the short term momentum macro view, I think is helpful. Um, so, yeah, I would say reading the market tea leaves from an options market point of view is, is certainly a, a key part of, of, of what I do for sure. Portugal, also very nice indeed. Uh, Stuart, if you've attended one of my previous masterclasses, is tomorrow going to be similar? Look, there is, um, uh, Stuart, there's always going to be some overlap because obviously we need to go over some of the basics. Um, I must say, generally speaking, I find 
even listening to the same thing two or three times and it's not going to be the same thing and i pick up something different so i think you might well find you're going to pick up something um, extra there Stuart. so i still encourage you to join us um how's probability derived for options uh, essentially standard deviation and the black skulls model <laughs> there you go i've shut you up now haven't i uh, see you in italy this summer um there we are, folks. So, yeah, markets are looking uh, bright and bushy-eyed and green this morning, with the exception of Apple. I'm not quite sure why, but everything else is basically looking up. And um, that is because the government is floating the idea of the bailout of all bailouts that will make all other bailouts jealous. And it would be the complete 100% guarantee of all bank deposits. It's like basically the end of the free market as we know it. Just baffling and you know the thing with those things is you can never take that back can you because you cause market collapse if you do so it's just yeah it's a it's a strange day um Lake Como, Lake Como is absolutely fantastic. Um, Italy is indeed nice. Giovanni says Italy is nice for a tourist <laughs> with a wink. Um, yes, which is why they're all in, in Monaco for some reason. <laughs> uh, right, guys, I appreciate you watching and tuning in. Um, last chance, promise to sign up for the masterclass tomorrow, felixfriends.org slash wealth. And I hope to see you there. And I wish you a beautiful day.